It's that time of year again. The Caledonian Society of New Orleans cordially invites you to its 48th Burn Supper. A Burn Supper is a celebration of the life and poetry of the Scottish poet Robert Burns. The suppers are normally held on or near the poet's birthday on 25 January, known as Burns Night. Highland dress is encouraged at a Burns Night Supper, and here I am wearing my kilt, which is Highland dress. And this is my family tartan. I'm also wearing buckle brogues, which are simply shoes with silver buckles on them, which traditionally should also be worn with diced toes, which are just socks with a pattern on them. But these socks will do fine for tonight. So let's head on out to the party. Welcome to Nolagen. Let the good times roll. We're having our burn supper at the Southern Yacht Club, which has quite a distinguished history. It is the second oldest yacht club in the United States. Burns Night also has an interesting history, with the first burn supper being held in July of 1801. Let's go ahead and head on inside here and check this place out. So this is the main entrance, and we're going to have to go over to the elevator here and go to the third floor where the event's being held. Robert Burns was born in 1759 and died on July 21st, 1796. So essentially the celebrations at Burns Nights all over the world will be a celebration of the poetry of the man and, of course, lots of food and some toasts with many adult beverages. And as the night progresses, you'll eventually learn you probably do know some of Robbie Burns' works that you didn't know were written by him. So, let's look at the agenda for the night. So, we're going to start out with piping and cocktails from 6.30 to 7.15. Then we'll hear from the Mistress of Ceremonies. Then the President's Welcome Address. Then a toast to the Queen. A toast to the President. A toast to the Armed Services. Then the presentation of the Haggis and an address to the Haggis, which is one of Burns' poems. And this is also a very long-standing tradition at Burns Nights all over the world. Then we'll have Burns' Grace. Then dinner. Then we'll have a toast to the lassies. Then a response to the laddies. Then we'll have another Burns poem. Then we have Flowers of the Forest, which is an old Scottish folk tune that memorializes the Battle of Flodden, where we remember those who died over the past year. Then the Immortal Memory, which is a toast and a speech dedicated to Burns. Then we all sing Auld Lang Syne, which is an old Scottish folk tune Burns preserves. You've probably heard around New Year's. So that's too much to get into one video, so we're going to skip straight ahead to the presentation and the address to the Haggis. And take note that the address of the Haggis will be in Scots dialect, which is a much different version of English than we're used to. So get ready, as this is like stepping back in time, as this is an old tradition that has happened for a long time and will still be happening all over the world during the celebration. <laughs> Things, my heir. The groaning trencher there do you feel? Your curtis, like a distant hill. Your pin, what helps to mend the milk in time of need. While blow your horse, the tears distill, like amber deep. This night, see rustic labor dance, and cut you up with ready slice, trenching your gushing entrails for that. A sunny ditch. And then, oh, what a glorious act. Warm. Reekin. Rich. Then horn for horn they start to strive. Do not take the henbows on they drive till off. The will swell tight to be live. Or bent like drums. And all keep mine. Makes like to ride. We thank it. Homes. Is there that all his French ragu? Or all the old that would stop a sea? A thicker sea might mock her spew with pale pet stoner. Looks dim with sneering scorn for him. One sick of dinner. Poor people. See him for his trash. As feckless as a withered rash. His spindle shank a key with lash. His knee a knit for a little blood or feel to dash. Oh, how one knit. But mark 
thoracic haggis fit. The trembling earth resounds in his tread. Clap in his swelling knee will play till market whistle. And legs and arms and heads will sniff. Powers of mock my kind to tear, and distability all scorched in one's nay stinking where that chalks in muggies. But if you wish, a great player, yea, hard, a haggis. A haggis. Ah. Here's the haggis, and this is a Scottish dish consisting of a sheep's or calf's offal mixed with suet, oatmeal, and seasoning and boiled in a bag, traditionally one made from the animal's stomach. It's currently illegal to import it from Scotland, so we have to make versions of our own here in the USA. Up at the front, we have the American flag, Scottish flag, and a portrait of Robbie Burns. We have a nice selection of adult beverages for the numerous toasts that will be involved tonight. And then we've also got our price list for the cash bar. So it's time to get ready. The piper is standing by to play more of his bagpipes. I'm here with my pal, the Commodore. He's wearing trues and I'm wearing the kilt. The trues are simply the pants made out of your tartan. So we're gonna sit down at our table and get busy. Here's the haggis and we're passing it around. I don't really like haggis, so I'm gonna start out with my salad instead, and I'm way happier starting out with this. Get a little rough of Jimmy to start out the meal. So it's really good salad, good dressing, and then next up we have some delicious yeast rolls. So we've got plenty of butter, and here we go. I already buttered my bread, and we're gonna take a good little bite, and oh yes, this is a good roll. Mmm, these are certainly great. Now, uh, the Commodore got the pork loin. And then I got the salmon. So those were the two choices of entrees we could have tonight. I, you know, like the salmon better myself. So let's go ahead and take a bite and see how it is. This is a very nice salmon filet here. I don't think they imported it from Scotland though, but uh, it's still a nice piece of fish. Got good flavors. So that's a nice little piece of seafood there. And then we've got some potatoes. These look quite nicely roasted and yes, they have a good flavor. Sauce also goes very well with them. Then we have some asparagus, and it seems to be perfectly cooked, nice and crunchy with good flavors. And we have some carrots. Mmm, these also seem to be perfectly well cooked. All right, one more potato, and mmm, okay, so this has been a very nice meal so far. One little bite of carrot and asparagus to go. And then a little grand finale with this nice piece of salmon. Ooh, here we go. And mmm. So, just like I've destroyed this plate of food, go ahead and destroy that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. Comment below. Let me know what you thought about this meal. And while you're down there, check out the links to my Patreon accounts. I do work for tips, and I appreciate any help with that. Next up, we have some Scottish shortbread. And oh, I do love these delicious cookies. They have such buttery goodness in them. Ooh, oh, so delicious. I could eat a ton of these. Now we also got a nice little chocolatey cup dessert with a strawberry in it. So of course I've got to take the strawberry out. 
This is a Louisiana strawberry. We do grow Louisiana strawberries, and they're quite delicious. And this one is prime ripeness. Yes. Now we're going to dig into this little chocolatey, creamy dessert, and it looks pretty darn good, I have to say. Uh, let's see. Ooh, it also tastes nice and chocolatey, and oh, <laughs> now I've totally destroyed this dessert. So go ahead and destroy that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. Comment below. Let me know what you thought about this wonderful chocolatey strawberry dessert. Raise your glass. Meredith, you know the channel. All the beautiful You get to stand up and this <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that most of you will agree with me when I say, God love the laddies, because we sure do. Do the laddies. <laughs> Burns Supper Committee for asking me to toast the immortal memory of Scott McFarland. Ladies and gentlemen, please take a moment to charge your glasses for the immortal memory is first and foremost a toast. So that should be fine. And that reminds me of the moment. You can toast in anything but water. According to many sources, in 1801, the very first bird suppers were held in Ayrshire, only five years following the death of Robert Burns, and were initially celebrated on July 21st, which is the date of his death. The celebration of the bird supper changed to January 25, the date of his birth, in the year 1809, and was firmly the practice by the mid-19th century. This book is entitled The Chronicle of the 100th Birthday of Robert Burns by James Ballantyne and was published in Edinburgh, Scotland in 1859. It indeed chronicles the Burns Supper celebrations throughout the world on January 25, 1859. Now permit me, if you will, to set this historical time frame for you. In 1859, Queen Victoria was the Queen of Great Britain and had been so for the past 21 and a half years. Prince Albert was the Prince Consort and he would not die for another two, two years. The Duke Campbells, the Duke of Argyle was the eighth Duke, George Douglas Campbell. In the United States, the Civil War was still two years away. Oregon, would on February the 14th of that year become the 33rd state and the President of the United States was James Buchanan. In Louisiana, Robert Wycliffe, a lawyer from St. Francisville, was governor. Gerald Stiff was the mayor of New Orleans. The Sazerac cocktail had been around for just about 20 years. What I found interesting about the entries and the Burn Supper celebrations of 1859 is not how dissimilar they are to what we do in our Burn Suppers today, but rather how similar they are to today's celebrations. On January 25, 1859, according to the author James Valentine, it presented a spectacle unprecedented in the history of the world. The extent and variety of the materials necessary to chronicle the incidents of such a day may be judged by the following analysis of the meetings there in Chronicle. Scotland had 676, think about that, 676 celebrations on that one day. England, 76. Ireland, 10. The colonies, 48. The United States, 61, and Copenhagen, 1. I thought it would be of interest to read a few passages of how some of the communities here in the United States celebrated the 100th anniversary of the birth of Robert Burns. The entry for New Orleans is especially interesting for us since it's the only entry for Louisiana. New Orleans, a goodly number of brother Scots with a sprinkling of invited guests convened in the large room of John's restaurant in Carondelet Street to 
pay a mark of honor to the memory of Robert Burns, whose hundredth birthday it was. The chair was taken at the request of all the company by William Muir Esquire, British Council resident of this city. Messrs. Maxwell and Macaulay acted as croupiers, and I had to look up that word croupier because I didn't, didn't jive with what my image was. It was actually like the vice president of the mess. They did all the help with the toasts and it all went on and everything. So they acted as essentially assistants to the president of the mess. The supper was abundant and elegant, just as this is the one we had here tonight. The wines were of the best. The national haggis and oat cake were not forgotten. Neither was the Glenlivet, and I happened to be drinking Glenlivet. <laughs> which came among those wee short hours of on the twelve, or among the twelve, of which Robin was so free, so feeling the same. The banquet having been discussed with obvious relish, the chairman rose and proposed the first toast of the evening with a few remarks. It was Her Majesty the Queen. God bless her. Which was duly honored, one of the guests present, leading off the British National Anthem, which is God Save the Queen, and was joined by all present. The President of the United States was the next toast, and it was properly received. One of the guests taking occasion to say that without disparagement, of other qualities of the president, he had one good one. <laughs> and that was, his name was Scotch. <laughs> the land of cakes in which we live in may nothing ever separate them but the broad Atlantic. This was responded to by Dr. McCauley in a feeling and eloquent manner. The name of Robert Burns, whose centenary birthday we are meant to commemorate. This toast was drunk with all the honors. You don't know what all the honors is. They, the men were on the standing in the chair with their feet on the table and their glasses raised. <coughs> I don't know, it doesn't chronicle this, but usually all the honors, the glasses are broken. So, so no greater toast can be made to the memory of Scott of the Moral Park. Robert Burns! <laughs> So, thanks so much to everybody at the Caledonian Society for another fantastic Burns Night. And thanks so much to all of you out there for tuning into the Nola Gent channel, especially to my Patreons. And if you would just remember to go ahead and share this video with any of your friends or contacts that would enjoy it, it really would help me with the YouTube algorithm. And tune in next time for more good food, good times, and good people. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you would just click on the little circle here with a picture of my head in there and subscribe to the Nolajet channel, it would really help me a lot. I really appreciate it. Thank you.